Hello, welcome back to the Football Forecast. It's the, that time the Champions League draw has just happened right in front of our eyes, actually. All the groups are out and there's some absolutely tremendous groups, which means we definitely have to talk about all of them. Let's start with Group A, Bayern Munich. Good place to start. Thank you. <laughs> Not just a pretty face, that one. <laughs> Bayern Munich, Manchester United, Copenhagen and Galatasaray. So much narrative to this. Quick, we love narrative. We love narrative. We do love narrative. And yeah, two superpowers in Manchester United and Bayern Munich. Um, and then the narrative is Galatasaray. Like Wolf Zaha returning to maybe haunt Manchester United in the Champions League group stages remains to be seen. It's a good group. It's a solid Champions League group. You always have it in the Champions League where you have like two really good teams and you have one team that's decent and the other team that you kind of are the whipping boys of the group. I feel like that's what you've got there with Group A. Expect Bayern to win it, but Man United to put up a decent fight as well. Also the Harry Kane narrative. Harry Kane was meant to potentially go to Manchester United. He would love to knock out as many English teams as he can on the way to try and win the Champions League. Yeah, and you know what? He's in a really, really strong squad when you get a good look at that Bayern team. They'll fancy their chances to go all the way, never mind get out of this group. Um, and Manchester United are a big name, but at the minute they're underperforming. So, you know, Galatasaray might fancy their chance of second place there. There was a very famous fixture recently that Manchester United had lost against, I want to say, was it Besiktas last year in Europa League, potentially, maybe the year before? Pointless anecdote. <laughs> Let us know in the comments who it was against. <laughs> um, group B, Sevilla, Arsenal, PSV and Lens. We have done another video on Arsenal in the Champions League, but just very quickly, Arsenal definitely fancy their chances in this group. Mm. Yeah, for me, when I get a quick look at that group, I'm looking at Arsenal and Seville to go through, even though Seville might want to go third and drop down <laughs> to Europa. I don't think they're going to get that this year. I think they're going to go through with Arsenal. If they finish third this year, <laughs> there are questions that seriously need to be asked. <laughs> Um, Group C, Napoli, Real Madrid, FC Braga and Union Berlin. Lovely story there. Obviously, I think we spoke about this last season. Napoli had the amazing season last year in the Serie A. Real Madrid come into this year's Champions League. No Thibaut Courtois, no Karim Benzema. And more often than not, year after year, we normally say they've got the knack and they'll go all the way because they've got it. But they were destroyed by Manchester United, Man City, should I say, last season. Do you think that's going to have a bit of an effect coming into this season? Yeah, when you name the names that you, you named there, Courtois and, and Benzema missing, they're huge. They're irreplaceable players, in all fairness. Um, so it, I don't think it's quite the same Real Madrid. We might see a little bit of a downturn of uh, of what we're used to in this competition from them. Um, and I probably think, looking at that, I, I expect them to go through in the group, don't get me wrong. But Napoli's the, the powerhouse of that group. Yeah, Napoli obviously had a great season last year. Real Madrid, like you say, they've just got the heritage when it comes to Champions League football. The injury to Courtois is a big one. Yeah. I can't see a team um, with Kepa and goal winning the Champions League. I, you know all about that. Yeah, I would know <laughs> about that. I don't know. I think it's going to be tough on for Real Madrid, but as football fans who've seen it year after year after year after year, with someone like Drew Bellingham in their ranks, you can't ever rule them out, but I think it's going to be quite tough for them this season. So far, all pretty obvious. This one where it gets a bit uh, interesting. Because I know for a fact Glenn has not watched any of these teams. Well, <laughs> do you know, I'm looking at this group and I'm thinking, I'm not interested in that group. <laughs> <laughs> group D, Benfica, Inter Milan, Salzburg and Real Sociedad. Football purists will say they'll enjoy watching Sociedad. Maybe Salzburg over the last few years have caused a few upsets. Then you've got Inter Milan, last year's Champions League finalist, but the team looks very different. And then you've got Benfica, who are always in the Champions League group stages, always come up with at least one decent result. But who do you think actually qualifies in this group? Um, I don't, I, <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't, he said I, um, I um. I don't, I don't, I'd say Inter Milan. I'd say Inter Milan, you can't, they got to the Champions League final last season. It'd be, it'd be pretty disrespectful in a group that contains Real Sociedad, Salzburg and Benfica to say that Inter Milan wouldn't qualify. Um, and Benfica are always fun to watch in terms of if you're doing a scout admission, especially yeah. for those FM players out there. Benfica, are, in terms of players translating into other major European leagues, those, the Portuguese league does travel quite well. So I'm going to say Inter Milan and Benfica from that group. I would agree with Inter, but I would go with Sociedad. Good shout. To be fair, they were very, very good last season in Europa. Um, although David Silva has now retired. By the way, what a footballer. Mm -hmm. um, group E, final Atletico Madrid, Lazio, Celtic. Another group. Where, you, I mean, I actually think this group could be interesting. Yeah. Lazio are, are an interesting watch. Final are very attacking. Celtic, obviously, always bring that Champions League heritage. And then Atletico Madrid, a few people have backed them to actually go very far in the Champions League and also win the league. They just came off the back of a 7-0 win against Real Vallecano. 
And I actually quite like their squad. And in the Champions League, they're always dangerous. Yeah, when I get a look at this one, I feel as though it's quite evenly matched, apart from Atletico, that I think will win it. But Lazio, Celtic and Feyenoord, I think they'll take a lot of points off one another. And yeah, that'll be interesting to see who goes through second place there. Celtic must be looking at that group thinking, yeah. we could actually get out of the group stages yeah. this time around. Could have been a lot worse for Celtic if you look at that group. It's tough for them though. It is tough. I think when you're you're playing against a, no disrespect to the uh, the Scottish League, but when you're playing against those quality of teams and then you translate that into midweek football in the Champions League, despite the fact that it's not one of the strongest groups in the Champions League, I think it will be tough for Celtic, especially against the likes of Atletico Madrid. And this is where it gets very tasty. Group F, this is definitely mm. the group of yeah. death. And I mean, everyone was looking forward to seeing Newcastle in the Champions League, irrespective of who they got in the group. But now Everyone is trying to get a ticket to St. James's. They've got AC Milan, <laughs> Borussia Dortmund and PSG. Every single away day is a classic. Oh, look at those away days, mate. We need to go to a couple of them at least. What, Paris, Dortmund, Milan and up in the northeast of Newcastle, place that we were at not too long ago doing the 24-hour challenge. I think it, this is the most exciting group of the Champions League this season. Um, I like the work that PSG have done in the transfer window. They've kind, mm. of, they've kind of abandoned that Galacticos um, method or, or theory and kind of Four players that fit together more as a team. Um, Dortmund were disappointed in terms of where they ended last season, but they always come good in the Champions League and always good for a performance or two. Um, Milan got to the semi-final last year, so it's going to be tough for Newcastle, but it's going to be a lot of fun away days. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, th I think the Geordie fans will be both delighted and terrified <laughs> yeah. with this group. But you know what? When I, when I do get a look at it, and they're, they're big names, don't get me wrong, Paris, Milan, Dortmund... But Newcastle at their best, they can do a job on those and, and they will, they'll fancy their chances. I think you look at this group and you think, although there are very big sides, big names as well, Dortmund typically in the Champions League are so erratic. Paris, as we know, are, are very similar. And AC Milan have lost a lot of star players, including Tonali. There's a great narrative there that yeah, Tonali yeah. takes on the club that they thought he was going to play for forever. I actually think Newcastle get out of this group. Very quickly, predictions for this group while, while we're on the topic. Uh, Glenn, you can go first. <laughs> Oh, I can't predict this. This is too tough. Well, I'll go, I'll go Newcastle and... First, Newcastle top? No, just out. Come oh. on, <laughs> it's tight, this group. <laughs> uh, I'll go Newcastle and Paris for Mbappe to drag them through. Yeah, same. I'll go Paris, uh, PSG to win this group and then Newcastle finish second. It would be a Scrooge. I mean, it would be PSG and Dortmund. But I'd love to see Newcastle <laughs> go through. Um, group G. I mean, when the draw was happening, we, pre we predicted half of it, let's be honest. Man City, Leipzig, who love playing. Um, young boys and then although this is spelt like this it's actually Red Star Belgrade for us <laughs> what do we make of this group? Uh, it doesn't help that the, the most competitive team in this group Bayern Man City is Leipzig and then Man City taking Leipzig's best player uh, and, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Yeah, their other best player has gone to Liverpool so it's going to be quite tough for Leipzig to to compete with Man City in terms of winning this group, but you do expect them to qualify when you, you come up against like, the likes of Young Boys and Red Star Belgrade I think the pick of those groups are clearly Man City and Leipzig before you give your predictions, I'd love for you to read out what Red Star Belgrade <laughs> spelled in front of his ear. Cravenza Zavenda? Not bad, yeah, not, bad. not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not what, do, do you know it? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not bad. It could actually be really, really bad. City must be licking their lips. It's like a free pass, isn't it? I mean, come on. City first, Leipzig second. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I'd love to see a young boy surprised, but don't think it's going to happen. And then Group H, Barcelona back in the big time. Porto, Shakhtar, Donetsk, and then Royal Antwerp. I've got to be honest, looking at all these groups, it's actually probably only maybe one where I'm sitting down for every single game and every other game, every other group I'm going, there's at least a couple of midweeks there we can relax with our kids <laughs> for me and Glenn. Um, Who do you back for this one? Barcelona. Um, it was interesting though because watching Barcelona on the weekend and seeing some players that start for them I see Marcus Alonso there I see Ori Romeu I'm like is this Barcelona or is this is this a mid-table Premier League side and it's uh, they're, they're going through a transition Barcelona in terms of in terms of the style of play in terms of what they're trying to establish um, obviously suffer for a couple of injuries at the beginning of the season but based on the strength of the group I expect Barcelona to go through pretty comfortably Yeah it's not the Barcelona we, we've grown to know and love but I do think they'll have enough to get out of this group and I would like to see Shakhtar alongside them get out of it. Shakhtar do love a little surprise in the group stage but almost never make it through. Um, True. Porto. Porto are always dangerous in the Champions League. I'll go with Barca and Porto. Uh, fascinating Champions League draw. Uh, let us know what you think will happen in the group stages and who you think will maybe be the surprise package. Because I don't think they have, I don't think we've even touched on surprise package to be Newcastle? honest. Newcastle? Is that a surprise? In Premier that League group, side? In that group? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Surprise yeah. package. Oh, what do you 
boring as well. I'm going to say Newcastle as well. Let's give it to Galatasaray. Yeah, Newcastle. For my good friend Wilfred Zaha. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you think will happen in the Champions League group stages. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.